Hi, I'm Katrina, and today we're going to be talking about winter squash. Don't forget to hit subscribe or the thumbs up button so you don't miss any of our future episodes. So let's get to hanging out and playing in the garden. So there's a lot of sets to growing winter squash, and I think some are more important than others. At the end of our video, I'm going to give you my number one tip for growing winter squash. And that number one tip is what made me successful this time. But let's start out with varieties. So I grew three of your traditional winter squash varieties. There's a ton of different kinds of winter squash you can grow. Um, but I really wanted to focus on the three that are most commonly seen in the grocery store. So first, spaghetti squash. This is by far my favorite squash to grow. Um, and I've had some trouble with it. And <laughs> this is not my first time growing it. Um, another is an acorn squash. This one I had kind of mediocre results. As you can tell, it's quite small. And then my third kind, which you can see right here, is my butternut squash. Um, and so this one did very well, but it's, it's lagging behind some of the other squashes that I've grown. For my spaghetti squash, I actually am growing a bush variety. It's more of a semi bush variety. It has a, a fairly long vine. Um, there's one right here and it kind of sprawls all the way over here. So it does need quite a bit of room. And this is called Travoli. It is a hybrid. So saving the seeds is not going to give me exactly what I got this time. So I do have to rebuy these seeds. My acorn squash is a table queen. And like I said, I've had mediocre results with this. Um, I think I, I planted them a little too close this year, but there are a lot of good benefits of um, the table acorn, uh, table queen acorn squash in that it has a really tough skin. So the bugs don't seem to bother it and it is pretty resistant to powdery mildew. Um, as for my butternut, this is actually the first time I've grown Waltham butternut squash. Um, and I'm so pleased that I did because it has done very well. This one is a vining variety. It was planted in that bed. <laughs> it's made it all the way over here and it's made it on the other side of my corn. So it's all over the place, but that's okay. I'm learning to love uh, vining plants. They do have a higher yield. Now, a lot of people say that you should direct sow or direct seed your squash into your garden. And um, I did a test. I direct seeded and transplanted. I knew I wanted three plants of each variety. I direct seeded three and I um, put three in trays. I wanted to see which one would do better. Um, they pretty much behaved exactly the same way. Um, the one caveat is that if you are going to start them in trays, um, you do need to get them out of the trays and into your bed within three, no more than four weeks. If they get too big, the transplant shock is going to be too much for them to handle. After I had them all in the bed, um, I started working on how to feed them. Um, now the beds are prepped first with compost. I do put compost down onto my beds, especially in the particular areas where I know my plants are going to be. Um, sometimes I will drop in blood meal and bone meal. I didn't do that with the squash. I struck, stuck with compost and then um, I used tomato tone fertilizer on them maybe once a month, if that. They really didn't need that much help. Now, on to your next challenge. It's going to be your bugs and your powdery mildew. I found a way around the bugs, and that is part of our tip that you want to hang out until the end so that, I, um, so that you don't miss that. Um, but you do typically get a couple kinds of bugs. Squash wine borers are one of the worst, and a lot of people will take the stem of the plant um, where it comes up out of the ground and they'll wrap it with toilet paper rolls or aluminum foil or something to keep the squash vine borers um, from digging in, uh, the worms from digging in into 
the vines and killing the plant at the base of the plant. This is especially terrible for bush varieties. Whereas vining varieties usually put down roots along the way as they vine and so not as susceptible to it, um, but it can definitely kill off young plants. And then I have the most worst pressure of the moth uh, worms and they will eat the fruit, they will eat the vines, they will eat the leaves, they will decimate this entire um, population of my squash. I did use uh, in the past BT, and I think my BT might have went bad, so I switched to spinocide, I think is how you pronounce it. I wish just, I switched to spinocide this particular season. Um, and I try not to use it very much, only when I happen to see that there were worms or um, uh, the eggs, and I sprayed it in the evening after all the bees had already went home for the day because they, it can be harmful. Now the plus side of the spinocide is that it, it lasts a lot longer than BT. BT washes off with our rains um, and you have to keep reapplying it. But the spinocide doesn't seem to be bothered by any of that and it does last a lot longer. My next big issue, and it's always a big issue for me, is powdery mildew. I made the beginner's mistake years ago of taking leaves and plant debris that had powdery mildew and putting it in my compost bins. Yeah, bad decision. So now I had extreme uh, powdery mildew that happens throughout my entire garden. Um, so now I have learned whenever you do get some powdery mildew, which is exactly what is happening right here. Um, wait till the, the plant is dry after the morning dew and you need to cut these off. I use a pair of gloves that I then wash. I also have a pair of um, clippers or loppers that um, I specifically only use for plants that have powdery mildew so that even if I can't get them perfectly cleaned off or, or there's trace amounts left, that, that is the only thing that I use on those particular plants. You cut not just the leaf, but all the way down to the base where the leaf meets um, the stem, the main part of the stem. And then you bag all that up into a garbage bag or whatever you can do to enclose it and you throw it away. Do not leave it in your garden. Clip them off as quickly as possible. What you'll notice here is that there is a lot clipped off. This was, if you remember from my garden video, huge and bushy. And I had to clip a ton of it off so powdery mildew is a big problem and it will destroy the whole plant. And I'm just trying to get these plants to hang on a little bit longer so that they can completely um, finish uh, maturing the fruit that I have on here. Harvest time um, usually occurs when obviously the fruit is big enough or is reached its maximum, which you'll know that because it will actually stop growing. And second, you'll see here that this one is turned a nice golden yellow color. Um, there's also tests that you can do where you take your fingernail and you poke it into the skin to see if it's hard. Um, you can also check to see if the stem has browned up. These don't particularly happen. I can't use those uh, options in my garden um, because of the powdery mildew, because of the pest pressure. I have to take these off sooner than probably most people do, what our northern friends do where the plant dies off. Um, from there, the curing process begins. So I take these guys and since I'm doing them now, I just set them out in the sun. So I take them into my patio where I know that, you know, I have a screened in lanai, there's not very many bugs in there, um, and I lay them out next to my pool so that they get nice hot sun and they cure in that 80 degree temperature and it only takes maybe a week and then the skin is nice and hard and tough. Um, the stem will eventually brown up. It's already actually starting to do that on the top. Um, so once you've left them out, um, if you don't, if it's not sunny or the rain start and you can't leave them um, in your patio or somewhere in a sunny spot without them getting infested, uh, the other option is just to take them inside and leave them on the counter. They will um, cure on their own. Um, now I had spaghetti squash that I grew last season, much smaller than this guy right here. I think it was only softball size. <laughs> 
um, but it did end up curing and it did end up lasting for six months, which I thought was spectacular. So now it's time for my number one tip, why I was successful this year. When so many years passed, I have not been able to grow the size or the yield that I'm getting this year. And that is timing. I've always grown my squash according to all of the Florida calendars, not even the Northern calendars, because here in Florida, we know we don't follow the same schedule that most of our, our friends up North do. We have to follow a different schedule, but I even had to back up even further from that schedule. So I actually started my squash transplants and direct seed in February. Yes, before my last frost date. Uh, we did end up having two frosts after my plants <laughs> had started and were in the beds. Um, when those frosts occurred, I did lay down a frost blanket. Um, I did take pots like you have here and I flipped them over and covered. Now be very careful when you do this. The pots are black. If you do it too early, you're going to heat the plant up within that. But I waited till it was around, you know, dusk. I flipped that pot over the plants and then I covered it double layer, two layers covered with the frost blanket. Um, but the timing was really important for two reasons. One, we weren't getting regular rains, um, which meant that the powdery mildew did not come as early as it typically does for me. I was only watering twice a week. I was trying to do the minimum amount of watering to where the plants weren't stressed. And because it was nice and cool out and there was a lot of dew in the morning, I didn't have to water for very long. I think it was 15 minutes twice a week. I mean, minimal amount of water. Um, the other thing was, is I got them big and bushy and grown huge before squash wearing borers even came out of their hibernation. Um, the moth worms hadn't even started yet either. I had a good two solid months before I started to see any of those bugs appear, which allowed these plants to get super big. And the bigger they are, the healthier they are, the better they can fight off um, these types of bugs. Um, I really attribute my success this year to growing my traditional grocery store winter squash to starting them unusually early. Um, so that is your number one tip for growing squash. Um, I hope you enjoyed the episode and we'll see you next time.